So I'm joined by Mike Galvin from BT. Mike, good to see you. Good afternoon. Now, first of all, we want to talk about G.Fast. Um, BT announced that they're doing trials, uh, consumer trials in the UK this year. Um, what can you tell us about some of the early results and how those are going? Well, first of all, it's gone way beyond an announcement. The trials are live. We'll eventually cover trials in Huntingdon in Cambridgeshire and Gosforth in Newcastle upon Tyne. Uh, the plan is to cover 2,000 homes in each area. Um, currently, we're up to about 1,200 homes and the trials are building. So it's early days yet. We've got three suppliers involved in the trials. Uh, we're testing their kit. We're looking at the performance we get. We're also seeing what real customers actually use this bandwidth for. Currently, um, about a month and a half into the trials, it's absolutely going great. The kit is performing as expected. The customers are delighted and we're seeing the types of performance and the types of use actually of the service that we actually expected. There's a long way to go. We'll be introducing some more new technology into the trials later on this year, um, but we've got off to the best possible start. Okay, good stuff. Now, how would you then respond to some in the industry who say that G.Fast is just a short-term fix versus the FTTH, for example? So will you show me any long-term fix? Right, in the time I've been involved in the internet, I've thrown four complete sets of technology in the bin, and I think I would say don't get emotionally attached to any technology. You need to try a lot of things and a mix of technologies. Um, it's also a mistake to think that FTTH in its current form, which is 2.5 gig, 32-way split pond, is actually uh, an answer that's going to be everlastingly um, reliable for and do what customers want. I think that's a big mistake. You've got to keep pace with the times, and I'll see. We think we'll see much more powerful technologies come in the future. Um, these are just waypoints on that journey. Okay. Um, now we're seeing a lot of, sort of new competitors come along and sort of start to talk about fibre to the home. But of course, BT does do that technology. Um, tell us about kind of the, the footprint that you have in that technology, and maybe some of the plans for growing that as we go forwards. So we are actually the largest fibre to the home provider. We have 200,000 homes passed. Matter of fact we're larger than all the other providers put together. So people often say, and you'll, you'll hear competition say, well, BT doesn't do fibre to the home. Just remember that as a stat. It's a, it's a, a little detail that perhaps um, uh, they don't mention. Um, fibre to the home is an important part of our plans, and in some places it makes perfect sense. Greenfield Build is an example where it makes perfect sense. Um, but you've got to deploy the right technology that suits the circumstances. Which is, and we don't want to, for example, get involved in digging up all of the UK uh, to, to put that sort of technology in. So um, we're definitely proceeding with fibre to the home. It's definitely on our roadmap, but we're only deploying it where it's sensible, where it can be deployed with ease of use, right, and where there's customer demand for it. Sure. Um, and then maybe one of the other talking points is around how you're going to reach that final kind of 5%. Um, I think, again, you've sort of made some announcements around satellite technology. I know you're doing some fiber stuff down in Cornwall, for example. Maybe give us an idea about some of the different solutions that you're going to use for, that, for those remaining remote areas. So I think the final 5% is a really tricky nut to crack. And yes, we're looking at satellite, and that will be one of the solutions we put forward. But satellite doesn't always make sense, right? Remember, some people can't see satellites because there might be a mountain in the way, or it might be a national park and the satellite dish, um, you're not allowed to put the satellite dish up there. So you've got to look at what technology actually suits the environment. I can say that we're looking at a vast variety of technical solutions, radio solutions, satellite solutions, fixed line solutions, and we're seeing what actually works. It's like to be a mix of those. Um, it's also an area where government has to decide what it wants to do because in serving that last 5%, it's going to be an expensive process with some premises costing ten th tens of thousands of pounds to serve and maybe even a few uh, figures into six figures. You know, So it could be an expensive process and we have to decide actually as a nation how far we want to go down that path. Okay, now you mentioned regulation, of course a lot going on there at the current time. What would be your sort of final really message to other operators, again, who they've seen some criticism of BT um, in, over the last year or two, particularly around open reach. What would be your sort of final sort of message to them as, as, as we look forward? Well, we've got one of the most competitive markets uh, in the world under the current system. We've got consumers and business customers who've got unparalleled choice. We've got the highest rates of coverage. We've just seen the Ofcom report that says we've got one of the healthiest digital economies anywhere in the world. So I think you'd need a lot of convincing that the current system isn't working. A lot of evidence suggests that we're actually doing better than the rest of the world. And um, I'd also say, I can also understand why people want more. 
you know, if you think about it, the internet is a relatively new phenomenon if you uh, look back, and I think we'll see it being required to do more, enter into people's uh, normal lives to a much greater extent than we actually have now, and I think people will demand for more from it, and that's only natural. I think BT, uh, with open routes, will step up for that challenge. Mike, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed.